Okay, so today is Thursday, August 15th, 2024. Today is the last day of my 30th year, hopefully not the last day of my 30s, because tomorrow is my birthday. And I'm not really doing a birthday video right now. I might do one tomorrow. I've kind of thought about it. We'll see. But, um... I feel like I've had a pretty ding dang good week. Pretty ding dang good week so far. The first thing I have to bring up is, like I was saying last week, I started taking medication for my ADD and ADHD. I started taking Adderall. And that first day was euphoric. It was amazing. It was phenomenal. I felt so calm. I felt so peaceful. You know, I have a brain that's just thoughts everywhere all the time just boom and it was quiet and anytime I could like feel it start to kick up like if my mind is usually a hurricane I could feel a breeze coming in like trying to build up steam and then it was just wind and it was wonderful and having used it now for about a week it hasn't been quite as euphoric as that first time. And I think that was just because I was so used to, well, me. <laughs> and had just been feeling it. To just feel that silence and calm was amazing. Since, it has still felt really nice. I, it's not to say that I don't still feel sad at times. It's not to say that I don't feel stressed at times either. But I have noticed, even when I am stressed, it, almost, it feels more justified. Like, okay, I'm working on a project and like this is a lot of stuff I have to sift through. It is a little bit stressful just because there's so much, but I'm not stressing as much as I normally would over it. And like more little things that would normally just irk me and prick me and yeah, 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 yeah they don't and even if they kind of do i'm noticing it's just not as much as usual this is what i needed for my anxiety and i have been taking anxiety meds and i've been taking these anxiety meds for what now like a month or so and i know that it's something that's supposed to take a while until it kicks in so there's a non-zero chance that it's the anxiety meds finally kicking in it might be that the adderall is making the anxiety, it's giving a boon, like a buff to the anxiety meds. I did check with my doctor, like the meds I'm taking, it is completely fine to take them with the Adderall. It's also entirely possible that it's, no, it's just, I just needed Adderall and that my anxiety, maybe not my depression, but at least the anxiety was more to do with my ADD than the other way around. And it, I don't know, it's, it's been nice been really really nice some other things that have been nice uh, i've been getting back into walking i actually just took one like almost right before i started this i haven't been doing it as much for a few reasons number one was dealing with the bar and i'm like oh, i don't have time for this and i know i'm doing other shit but i'm stressing out when i'm doing those things too like i I don't have time to work out as much as I would want to. And also, it's been fucking hot. Uh, it's still kind of hot. It was really hot when I took a walk yesterday. I'm like, look, I'm going to go get ice cream. I might as well take a walk. It's only like 15 minutes down the road. And I don't know. I guess if I'm about to go put a bunch of sugar in my body, at least I can walk it out. Maybe sweat some of it off. But it's walking has been really nice. I've been, I remember earlier in the year, basically just pre-bar, I was trying to listen to a lot more albums. I remember I went through Daft Punk's discography. I went through, um, fuck, who did The Suburbs? Arcade Fire. I had started going through Radiohead. I think I did the first three albums. It was OK Computer, The Benz. Those are backwards. It's 3-2. What was the first one? It's like OK Pablo or Pablo. It's something, I think it's something to do with Pablo. Um... I've listened to the next two, which are Kid A and Amnesiac, which from what I understand were basically made together. Like they had this session or I don't know how long it was where they made 21 songs. The first 10 are Kid A, the next 11 were Amnesiac. And I liked them quite a bit. 
So I don't know how many albums I have left from them. I think it's about four or so. It's even from like three to five. So I'm just going to split the average and say four. After that, I have a list of like some of the artists I want to go through. I, I want to go through Sia. I I've liked the songs I've heard from Sia. I'm kind of interested in doing that. I'm a very big fan of Coldplay, so I would like to go through Coldplay. I really want to go through Drake and Kendrick because of the beef. And I know last year I did GKMC and I did TPAB again. I'll probably do them again, but I haven't heard Damn. I haven't heard Mr. Morale. I don't think I've ever listened to a Drake album. And I'm pretty sure there's a fuck ton of Drake albums. But I am interested. It's like, okay, okay. I have them, but I've been listening to Euphoria a lot. I just really like that song. Like, all right. From my standpoint, just actually listening to the songs and the disses and all that shit, I definitely think Kendrick won. I'm more of a Kendrick fan than a Drake fan because I there's one of his albums I've listened to I liked quite a bit. The other is an album I is probably one of my favorites in T-Bab. And I'm, like I said, I've never really listened to one for Drake. So I kind of want to listen to them like, all right, let me actually get a biased opinion now. And I don't, again, I don't know exactly when I'll get to them. When I do, I'm going to do all of Drake and then all of Kendrick or vice versa. I might do Drake first because I think his first album came out before DK. I'm pretty fucking sure it did. Okay, Drake was up for Best New Artist with Bieber. And they both lost Spalding. When was that? I want to say that was like 2011. And I want to say GKMC was... That's lost to Thrift Shop. And Thrift Shop, pretty sure, came out after Baby by a couple years or so. So I do think Drake came out first. So I'll probably try to get his discography done and then go to Kendrick's. Anyway, that was a bit of a tangent, but that's... Uh, that's a yeah. Music album projects are back on. I don't know if I'll really be doing album reviews. I'll be perfectly honest. I just don't feel like I'm. I don't feel like I'm the right guy for that. I know nothing about music theory. I could not tell you a whole note from an eighth note. I don't know the difference between rhythm and melody and beat. I just know, hey. I like this song, and it's like, I think it sounds good, or there's something about the really vibes in there, here's why I like the lyrics, or here's why I really like the singer's voice, or their tone, or whatever. I feel like it's more of a CTT thing, and then probably at the end of the year, here's all the albums I listen to, here's just kind of a vibe check on them like I did last year. Um, that That's probably as deep as that will go. In terms of other projects, Clay and I finished the show with Era yesterday. We did not end up doing the double feature just because we didn't really have time. But um, today is Thursday. Duh, of course, it's Thursday I'm doing this. Um, Tuesday, we watched Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla. And yesterday, Wednesday, we watched Terror of Mechagodzilla. I have not recorded my videos for either of these, but I have both of them, uh, the notes, written. I'm hoping to do that later today. I might do it right after this. I don't know. But it's, I'm kind of considering, do I want to do a tier list of the Showa era, or do I want to wait and then do all the Godzilla movies together? Do I want to do a tier list for each era and then do them all together? I think for me, I would rather just do them all together. Because, like, when I look at Friendship is Magic, with Friendship is Magic, I went season by season, and then afterwards was, okay... Now, for this final tier list, I just want to take all of my favorite episodes. And even once I maybe didn't rate as high the first time, now that I've had some weeks to think about them, they really stuck out to me. I kind of want to include them all and go through it. I'm not going to do that with Godzilla. I'd rather just do them all, because if I go era by era, when I get to the end, maybe I'll be like, all right, it's been some time. I've changed my mind on some of these. Or I'll be like, okay, well, I already ranked all the Showa eras, so... Here's the Reiwa eras that I already ranked, which I don't know would be, no, that is still five movies because it's still the animated trilogy, but we're going to be watching those separately. I, I talked about how we want to do the marathon is after each era, we're going to watch a season of Adventure Time because we really need to get fucking back into Adventure Time. Uh, hopefully we start that maybe this evening or like tomorrow or something where yeah, sometime, sometime we'll figure it out. Putting a pin in animated shows I need to watch. Um, Showa, 
Heisei, Godzilla 98, Millennium, Animated Urobuchi Trilogy, Monsterverse, then the live action Rabel film. So that way we can end on minus one. Uh, let me go and take that pin out. So yes, I'm hoping we will get back into Adventure Time. Some other animated shows I need to watch. Um, Konosuba Season 3 ended. And I'm really looking forward to watching that. Monogatari is out now. So literally yesterday, I was thinking to myself, wait a second, what is the new Monogatari show coming out? Because they said it's going to be two seasons or two arcs, but it's like the off and the monster arc or something like that. When does this come out? Because I've heard nothing about it. What do you mean there's six episodes that have already been out? What the fuck? So I think when... I'm so all this shit, damn it. Um... Oh, oh, also, another animated show I'm watching is My Adventures with Superman. I, Jose and I have three episodes left. We're hoping to finish it today. But when I'm done with season three of Atlanta, quick pin in that, I plan on binging Monogatari and catching... I don't know if it's done and I will just be watching the new stuff or if it's ongoing and I will just be catching up. But I've got two episodes left of season three, so I'm hoping to finish that today or tomorrow, and then watch Monogatari. Taking that pen out, almost done with Atlanta season three. I, I don't know how much I like it, but I know I really like it. Those of you who are not aware, at the end of season two, the group goes on like a European tour, and the episodes that focus on them in Europe. I really like because I really like these characters. Alfred in particular is my favorite character in the show. And some of these episodes that have focused on him, like I watched New Jazz last night. I liked it quite a bit. The, ah, uh, shit, I don't remember the other one. The, um, the one where his phone gets stolen with Wiley. I don't remember what the name of the episode was. That's easily been my favorite episode of the season. I don't know if I'd say it's my favorite episode of the show with just, like, how great Teddy Perkins is and some of the others. <laughs> Another one of my favorites is, again, I don't remember the name, but it's the one with Al... It's the one in the woods and also the one with Alfred and his, um, and his barber. <laughs> it's, so, it's so fucking funny! But this was easily one of my favorite episodes of the show so far. And then you have the episodes that don't have the main cast in them. And I haven't disliked them, although the first two were really uncomfortable to watch. Like, that, the premiere of the season, I was like, I don't feel like I'm watching Atlanta. I feel like I'm watching a short horror film. And it's really good. And I can see the bits of Atlanta in here, but it just... I'm not sure, and I, I think the next episode is another not based on the main cast episode. I think the finale is back to the main cast, so about 40% of the season has nothing to do with them, and I'm not crazy about that. Again, they're not bad episodes. They just feel weird to watch, you know what I mean? It's, it's like if this was... Like, if they were part of a mini anthology series, I feel like I'd enjoy them more rather than as episodes of Atlanta. And from what I understand, the final season doesn't do that, and it is just more about the main cast back in Atlanta and everything. I could be totally wrong, though. I haven't seen it yet. So there's that. Like I said, I plan on finishing Atlanta, or again, season three, either today or tomorrow. So I'll probably do a video on that. Probably do one on Soups, the Showa era films, this, a birthday video. <laughs> but I have a lot the next few days. And of course, of course, Project Horizons. I have finished chapter two and chapter three. So I've got, I'm a couple videos behind. I planned on doing my chapter two video right now, but my computer needed to charge. And like I said, because of how much shit I always have to say about Horizons, like, I'm not even gonna t write out my notes, I'm just gonna type shit out. That's, that's gonna be a lot easier for me. I don't know if I'll get to one of them later today. That would be nice. But at the same time, tomorrow is my birthday. 
And the idea of talking about Project Horizons on my birthday, in addition to some of the other things, a quick pin in that, is really exciting to me. <laughs> it's like I've said, this story, I have my problems. I have a lot of criticisms and issues and huh? <laughs> kind of moments throughout Project Horizons. It's something that's clearly left an impact on me. It's something I'm weirdly very, very passionate about. It's one of my favorite pastimes to be able to... I don't know what word I want to use. Just talk about the ding-dang thing. And being able to do that on my birthday sounds genuinely wonderful. Taking the quick pen out. I do still plan on watching Madoka tomorrow. I, I don't know if this is... A, available to view if there's like a notification for it but i set up a stream for tomorrow at 7 p.m to watch the series again my plan is to use like netflix or something maybe crunchyroll i don't know if it's on crunchyroll and watch it screen share and just talk about it as i'm watching it because it's again it's i've watched it like seven times I have a lot to say about it, not just, oh yeah, this part is cool, although I'm probably going to be saying that a lot, but some, like, other things that I've noticed, like some of the music cues and why maybe, like, why a particular music cue really works for me. I know a little bit ago, I was like, dude, I'm not the right person to talk about music, but I can talk about the music in this show because I've listened to it so many times and really just the emotional impact it has on me or why it's important for this track to be in this spot or why it's weird for a track to not be in this spot some of that kind of shit um i am still planning to watch all 12 episodes and then rebellion right after so starting at seven it's i'm it's gonna be a long night <laughs> But I don't work on Saturday, and I don't work on Friday, so I could feasibly do it. If I get way too tired, I might have to quit it early. I'm sorry. There might be a point where I'm like, I need to like take a break and go get food to just like recharge. We'll, we'll figure it out when we get there. But my plan is from about 7 o'clock until it's done to binge the series. If for some reason it there's an issue with the actual streaming like the audio doesn't work the video doesn't work i am sorry i'm really sorry i'm still new to this and trying to get the kinks figured out i still haven't really been able to do more like the celeste thing at some point i want to have a friend of mine i've got a couple people in mind that might be able to help to see if we can get that shit figured out and if so great i'd love to do more shit with that if not eh, it sucks but it is what it is you know uh, I think that's all I have to say on that. So we're going to move on to the next thing. And I'm probably going to need my notes here in a second to see what I'm missing. But I can talk about... Oh, I can talk about that. Um, I've been on Tinder for a couple weeks. It's gone nowhere. <laughs> but I, I'm doing it. I'm... I'm trying. I had one person match with me and we messaged for like a little bit. And then she's like, hey, you know, it's be better to message me on Instagram. Okay. I have an Instagram. So I messaged her on there and she's like, hey, you know, thanks for following me here. It's cool that we matched on Tinder. Um, Here's the link to my OnlyFans. I really appreciate it if you bought it. I'm like, um... No, I don't really want to do that. You know, if we matched and, you know, you want to talk and get to know each other, that sounds great. I would love to do that. But no, I, I don't want to get fucking scammed. And she keeps messaging me back. Like she hasn't in a while when I made it clear, like, no, please stop asking. But like, hey, you know, it's been a while are you sure you don't want to? It's really good. You know, I, you say you just want to talk, but I can't tell if you're really serious if you don't buy my OnlyFans. And that's 
annoying and kind of disheartening. It's like, oh, look, someone matched with me. Oh, that's why. <laughs> um, so I plan on using Tinder for maybe like a month or so to see if it goes anywhere. And I know that's not a whole lot of time, but also... It's not exactly cheap. And if after a month I'm like, look, this is literally not going anywhere, then why should I bother? Like, there's other dating apps I could use, or maybe I'll wait a little bit to try some of the others. I don't know, but it's something I'm kind of trying. Uh, oh, that reminds me. I don't think I've talked about this. But it, talking about uh, someone messaging me to buy shit reminds me. So about a week or so ago... I was going through my Twitter, and I was like, you know, I get notifications that people follow me, and I don't always follow back just because I don't get around to it. That maybe makes me kind of an asshole. Let, let me actually go through the list of, like, people who have followed me that I have not followed back. Bot, bot, bot. Okay, that looks like a real person. Bot, 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 bot. Real, real. Bot. But trying to follow back the people who seem like they were real people. A previous time when I had done this, I had followed people back and then I was getting DM'd by them like, hey, you followed me back. Thank you. Nice to talk to you. How are you? Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, look, a friend. And as the conversation went on, it was like, hey, like, do you do videos? Do you do streaming? Yeah, you know, kind of like I, I do like to make videos like, well, you know, I'm a graphic designer. I could help you with that i could make you like a vtube thing i'm like i'm do you want to look at what i have i mean no offense but no not particularly i mean we were i thought we were just talking and having a conversation but now you're trying to sell me something which makes me substantially less interested in everything you've had to say and will say but sure, and then I look at it and go, yeah, I'm just not interested. And then it happened a couple times. And as I was going through this, looking at like, all right, that's a bot, that's a real person. I was like, huh, what are the odds that that might happen again? So it happened again. <laughs> and there was one who was kind of the same thing. They were polite about it, but still clearly just trying to sell me shit. Then there was this other person <laughs> who was doing the same thing. I was like, hey, do you want to see my stuff? Sure. Hey, you want to commission me? Uh, not particularly. Well, why not? I mean, I'm not particularly interested. You know, I, I have an artist now that if I need a commission, this is the person I go to. Well, why? Why do you just have them? I don't know. I mean, it's... They do exactly what I need. Like, I'm really happy with their services. I don't feel a need to change. Well, I think you should probably, you know, get multiple people because um, you should. And uh, my stuff, is, like, you don't have to worry about payment. My stuff is very cheap. My price is very good. I think this is a good idea. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm just not interested. And then a few hours later, hey, um, I noticed you hadn't responded. Don't worry. My stuff is really cheap. I think we should do this. Why? I, it's such a good idea. Why aren't you doing it? I'm like, I'm actively getting harassed now. What the fuck? <laughs> it, it was an experience. Like, they haven't done it in, like, a week or so. Thank goodness. But for a couple of days, like, this is really, really annoying. Fuck, man. <laughs> um, let's see. I gotta check the list. I know there's something I want to talk about, but I want to see if I got anything else. Uh, I talked about the meds. I talked about the Showa era, Soups, Atlanta. Oh, yeah, I did start Xenogears. I haven't... So I played the prologue, and then I haven't touched it in almost a week. And this is something I talk about a few... I've talked about a few times on the channel. It's... When I mess with something, like a show, a book, a game, and I haven't fucked with it in a while, it's really important for me to tell how do I feel about that. Am I like, man, I don't give a shit that I haven't messed with this? Or am I like, man, I really want to, I just haven't had a chance because there's other stuff I've been doing. And Xenogears is firmly in the latter territory. I'm like, no, no, no. 
I haven't been playing it. I want to play it. I'm like kicking myself that I haven't played it, but I needed to make sure like I got the show of movies done and I wanted, I've done the big pen. I've been doing a lot of that or maybe I've been doing other stuff. I will play Xenogears. I really want to play Xenogears. The game left an interesting first impression, like in a good way, not like a, huh, that was the first, but like, no, that was a pretty good first impression. I'm excited to play more. We'll get to it when we get to it. Hopefully we'll get to some of it. Probably not tomorrow. It was just like another day of not playing Xenogears. Today we're going to be finishing Superman. Maybe I won't get to it today either. I don't know. Maybe it'll just be like a Sunday thing. <laughs> like instead of going to church, I'm trying to become as gods. I don't know. But I am really looking forward to playing more Xenogears. Uh, talked about Horizons. Da -da 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 -da. Said I'm getting back to walking. Okay. I did talk about Monogatari as well. The other thing to talk about the big pin is writing. Because that's my thing. That's the thing that I really like doing and really love doing. And kind of like with Xenogears, there was a few days, like near the end of last week, where I just hadn't been. I'm like, I really want to. I'm mad that I haven't been, but... We'll get to it when we get to it. It's just been a lot of shit. And oh boy, did I fucking get to it. Like I was writing, I try to write my notes for my uh, Thursday videos throughout the week. Usually about like Saturday, Sunday, Monday, I'll kind of start and just like throw a couple things on there that have been of note. And I was like, all right, writing, question mark, because I really haven't done any. And then Monday, I just went off and just wrote a fuck ton of shit. Tuesday, I wrote a bunch I didn't write as much yesterday, but I did a little bit of editing on what I had written already this morning. I wrote like a couple paragraphs of another chapter. It's been great. It's been exciting. Um, so I think what I really want to do is probably alternate weeks. Because if I keep going, because right now, as I've said, Auric Halcom is the project I'm really working on. That's the novel. Severance is the visual novel. If I keep going until Orichalcum is done, I'm not going to mess with Severance for a while. Orichalcum's on a very good pace, but there's still a lot of novel to revise. I've thought, like, maybe go chapter by chapter, like, do a chapter of this, do a chapter of this. I'm like, I don't want to do that. Because if I'm on a roll in one, I don't want to stop and go to the other unless... Yeah, no, that's really it. It's like, if I'm on a roll, I want to keep going until I've hit a natural stopping point. And you could argue that, you know, finishing a chapter is a natural stopping point. That's not how I've been cooking lately. <laughs> like, on Monday, I wrote a good chunk of one chapter and then a good chunk of another. And then Tuesday was, let me finish that first one. And I've already kind of started a little bit of the one after, but I need to go back and do that other one because story is cooking right now. I think what I might want to do is kind of alternate weeks, though. Like, here's a week where I do a lot of work, Halcom writing, and if I'm still feeling it and in, like, the middle of a chapter, I will finish that. But I'm hoping to finish to finish one of the chapters. Like I said, it was chapter, chapter, chapter. This chapter's done. This chapter, there's a good chunk done. This one is barely started. I would like to finish this one in the middle and get part of this one at the bottom done probably get a good outline for it done maybe tomorrow i think really what i want to do tomorrow is in the morning go for a walk do my project horizons videos in the afternoon right and maybe watch monogatari in the evening actually probably not even monogatari because i could probably do that yeah i'm gonna watch all of madoka i could do monogatari on saturday and then in the evening watch madoka that sounds like a lovely fucking birthday. Hopefully I don't have to deal with Steven Seagal snatching it because, you know, he's going to snatch every motherfucking birthday. Okay, I have to give a shout out to Napoleon Blown Apart, which is a, um, he does video essays about, like, MMA and combat sports. Last night I watched the video essay on Frank Dukes, which is one of the fake martial artist videos. The Steven Seagal bits, whatever, he's just roasting Seagal, make me so happy. And that's that clip of that really long pause. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. 
because I'm gonna snatch every motherfucking birthday. <laughs> it's so silly and bizarre. I love it. Or listening to Strut. The <laughs> I dare not spoil what Steven Seagal says in Strut. But I implore you to listen to it. I wouldn't call it a good song. But I would call it entertainment. Also, in the his Brock Lesnar video, which was really good. I enjoyed it a lot. In the, like, chapter breaks, there's, like, this 8-bit version of Strut. I recognized it immediately. It was so funny. Anyways, I, I had to give a shout-out to, uh, to his channel. Or was my point? Oh yeah, that's what I want to do on my birthday. Because my birthday made me think of Sakal. I want to do a lot of work Halcom this week, and then next week go back into Severance and do. I'm probably not going to do multiple chapters because Severance is very. There's a lot per chapter. I'd like to do that for a week, maybe two, then get back to Orc Halcom, and then you know, blah 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 blah. Opulent Shoals is something I don't plan on working on until Severance is done. I think I've mentioned it before. I I feel like I can more or less do Severance and Oric Halcom at the same time because they're different mediums. This one's a book. This one's a visual novel. I want to turn Opulent Shoals into a visual novel the way I am with Severance. So when this one is done, I can work on this one. It's a story that I've been working on, off and on, since, like, 2012? Maybe 2013. Really started writing it about 2015. Because I got... There's supposed to be six of them. I got three of them done in law school. And I haven't really been able to write it since. Because I didn't know where the fuck it was going. Because I knew where it was going, but I wasn't happy with it, and then I changed it, and then I wasn't happy with that. Earlier in January, I think I finally understood where it was going. I think it was January, and I spent a lot of time in February, I think in March, really honing that in. And while I feel like there's still some details that should be smoothed out, which probably won't happen until I'm actively writing it, I think I'm finally, finally happy with Opulent Shoals and understand it. And I'm so, so excited to get a chance to work on it. And the reason I'm bringing it up is a few years ago, because I was thinking about maybe trying to get them published, is I had sent the first one to an editor. And we had gone over it, and she actually seemed to like it quite a bit. And I didn't end up doing the other two. I'm like, that's... The service is helpful. It's not cheap, but it is helpful. But maybe maybe someday I'll, you know, hit her up for the others for another project. We'll see. And I actually got an email from her yesterday. And she was saying, she's like, hey, you know, um, like I was doing some editing on another project. And it reminded me of Opulent Shoals. And I thought about the story. And I thought about you. And I wanted to reach out, see how you're doing. I wanted to know, like, is that a series you're still working on? Is there some other stuff you're working on? And I just kind of had that moment of, oh, you thought about it. Like, it, I'm not going to say, like, oh, man, it left this phenomenal impact on her or anything. But it's like, huh, you, it left some impact where she actually thought about it. And that's just really nice. That, like, as a writer, that is something wonderful to hear. And I guess circling back to Atlanta... It's why I liked that episode with Wiley so much. Like, it, I think it's right at, no, was it, what was it after? I don't think it was right after the, um, three, no, was it? No, three slaps is the Laquarius episode. Then there's the reparations episode. I don't think it was right after one of the non-cast episodes so I can't really say that's why it felt like a breath of fresh air I think I just hadn't watched Atlanta in a few days and that's why it felt like a breath of fresh air but Alfred's interaction with Wiley as especially near the end when Wiley is telling his story and how Paperboy's music 
is something that really affects him and impacts him. And then he performs his song with Alfred just, like, sitting there silently. I think that's why it's one of my favorite episodes, if not my favorite episode of the show, is, like, that interaction is beautiful. And as someone who writes and wants to tell stories, this is the kind of thing that, like, I'm striving for. To have, to have made something that someone else reads, whatever the medium is, maybe play for a VM. I mean, you're playing it, but you're reading it, but you know what I mean? That affects them, and that it's something that they love and inspires them to make something. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not like, I'm going to change the world to make the most inspirational shit. Like, no. But there have been a lot of things that have had that kind of impact on me. It's why I'm looking forward to watching Madoka on my birthday, because I find it very inspirational. It's why as much shit as I talk about Project Horizons, it's had a substantial impact on me. You watch Little Witch Academia, it's... It doesn't seem like the kind of thing that would have this huge impact, but every time I sat down to watch it, I was like, this is what I want to make. Something that you can just feel my love and my passion for the project in every second of it. That's what I want to do. I want people to read or play or watch whatever my work and feel that same love for it. Um, 36 minutes. That's a, At first I thought that was a five. I was like, there's no way I've been talking for an hour. Holy crap. Um, I think that's a good place to stop this. I hope you have a good Thursday and a good week and a good weekend, all that good shit. Um, I'll prop hopefully, if there's no issues with the stream, hopefully I'll see you tomorrow if you want to watch Madoka. If you don't want to, that's fine. If you're busy, that's understandable. Um, either way, have a good day.